five. Good luck. Merhaba arkadaşlar. Hepiniz IFT Talk webinarımıza hoş geldiniz. Bugün İngiltere'nin prestijli üniversitelerinden University of Salford'da akademik eğitim ve burs fırsatları hakkında bilgi verecek Nick ve Neil Bey. Neil, the stage is yours now. That's great. Thank you. Merhaba everybody. Welcome from a very cold England. I hope you're all keeping well. My name is Neil Robinson and I teach at the University of Salford and I'm based in the business school. I teach broadly in marketing management related subject areas and within the business school we have a rich range of undergraduate, postgraduate, uh, PhD related programs associated with business and management. So that's a broad overview to it. I know you're going to see a presentation today with myself and my colleague Nick and I'll, I'll tell you a little bit more about the actual business school when we get to that point. Nick, can, can I pass to you there? You certainly can, Neil. Thank you very much. Uh, good morning and mahaba, everyone. Um, well, it's actually, it's good afternoon now. It's just, just gone past noon in the UK. I hope you're all very well. Thank you for tuning in. Um, as Neil says, um, you know, we'll, we'll do a presentation this morning, um, run through some um, information about the university, the sorts of programmes that we offer, study options, accommodation, fees, scholarships, student life, all that kind of thing. Um, and then we'll we'll do the presentation and um, we'll show a short video about the university um, and then we'll take some questions. Um, so if there's anything that you'd like to ask about anything about studying in the UK at Salford, um, anything related to that, please feel free to type your questions and we'll go through those um, and answer them so that everybody can can hear the answers. Um, and um, it's really easy, obviously, um, on the system here, you can just type your questions in the chat box and we'll pick those up. So yes, thank you for joining us. And uh, we'll go on to do the presentation now, I think. So I'll just share some content. Okay. So hopefully, um, you should be able to see on the screen there, um, a couple of pictures of Neil and I, um, and, um, I'm, uh, I work in the international office at the university, so I'm, I'm responsible for um, student recruitment and marketing um, in quite a wide range of um, countries, but um, particularly Turkey. Um, and that means that I'm basically here to help students to um, make their applications, to think about what they want to do, and to go all the way through the application process to hopefully um, beginning a program at Salford. Um, so I'm I'm kind of the person there who's who's there to to make that all hopefully easier for you. Um, and then Neil, as he mentioned, is um, lecturer in the business school. Um, Neil Neil's been at Salford for many years. Um, how long have you been around now, Neil? I think 15 years now. Yeah, I joined uh, approximately 14 years ago, and I've been based in the uh, in the business school. And in recent years, I've I've worked quite extensively with Nick, and I, I do Turkey quite regular with with Nick. I know Nick does the wider Middle East, but as I say, we get some very good students from that region. And as I say, you'll all be welcome. Um, we often get students joining us who've met us at a, an actual recruitment fair and they decide to do something like engineering, but they always come over and say hello to myself and Nick where we're based. So it's nice to see the students and I'm sure today's presentation will be, will be very informative. Thanks, Neil. Um, if we just go back to the, the presentation, um, so just to give you a bit of background on the university, um, we've been a university for just over 50 years. Um, we, we got university status from the uh, UK government by Royal Charter in 1967. Um, so we're a fully accredited, accredited and recognised UK university. Um, we're, we're what's usually called a state or a public university. Um, which means that we don't offer it for profit um, and, um, you know, we, we are there purely as an educational institution. But our roots um, in teaching um, go way back into the 19th century. We started out as an engineering college um, originally, but we have branched out since then and we teach a wide range of subjects, which we'll talk about in a bit more detail as we go through. Um, just to give you an idea of where we are in the UK, as you, you may not have heard of Salford, um, but I'm sure that everybody um, attending the presentation has probably heard of Manchester, um, very famous. Um, it's one of the largest cities in the UK, obviously very famous for football. We have two of the, the biggest teams in the world here, um, but also as a, you know, a, it's a great student city. 
Um, we have um, one of the largest numbers of students of any um, city in Europe. Um, there are three big universities in Manchester and several smaller ones and colleges now. Um, so they must be getting on for probably around 150 to 200,000 students in the city. Um, the overall population of Manchester is about two and a half million and Salford is part of Greater Manchester. So we're located very close um, to Manchester city centre. Um, if you were to travel from our campuses um, into the city of Manchester, it would, if you walked, it would take you about 15 minutes. Um, if you took a train or a taxi or a bus, um, it would take you about five minutes. So it's really accessible. The UK is not a very big country, um, so it's very easy to get around. You can be in London by train or car within two hours from uh, Salford in Manchester. And the transport links throughout the UK from us uh, are, are very good. You can see on the screen there exactly where we're located, pretty much dead in the centre of the UK. Um, and we're very close to other large cities in the north, such as Leeds, Liverpool, Birmingham, Sheffield and so on. And also, Manchester International Airport is a, a key hub for um, international flights. So it's very easy to get to Manchester, particularly if you're in Turkey. Um, Turkish Airlines fly usually twice a day, um, direct from Istanbul to Manchester. It takes about four hours. Neil and I have taken that flight many times when we visited uh, Turkey to come and do recruitment events. Um, but you can also fly via the main European hubs, places like Amsterdam, Paris, Berlin, Frankfurt and so on. Um, so it's very, very easy to get to. Just to give you a quick quick bit more background about um, Manchester. Um, it's a very famous city. I mentioned football, but also very famous for science, technology and culture. Um, it's probably one of the best cities in Europe to be a student in. Um, and Neil and I can both speak about the Salford uh, as, as students as well. I, I did my master's degree at Salford. Um, and Neil, you did your PhD at Salford, didn't you? Yeah, that's right. I, I studied here and did my PhD. And, you know, great facilities, great staff and a wonderful location. Yeah, it's, it, it is. I'll talk a bit more about this in more detail in a moment, but um, it is a, you know, it's a very welcoming and friendly university and I think very supportive. You can see on the screen there um, the oldest building on the campus, which was opened in 1896. Um, so it's uh, perhaps what you might think of as a, you know, a traditional UK university building. Um, and that's a very, very kind of grand old building called the Peel Building. And then by contrast, we have our campus here at media city um, we are in the building just on the right there but you can see in the foreground and um, the bbc and itv buildings and tv studios media city is um where we teach a lot of our programs in things like journalism media television radio and um, that kind of thing um, and it's now the biggest media hub in europe there's a, over 80 different media companies there now so it's a very exciting development and that's where one of our campuses is to talk more about the, the kind of academic side of the university, um, like most universities, we divide up into a number of different schools, colleges or faculties. Universities call them different things, but it, they're basically the same thing. Um, we used to call them colleges, we call them schools now, and we like to have a bit of a change every couple of years. Um, and you can see on the screen there, we've got the Salford Business School, we've got the School of Arts, Media and Creative Technology, we've got the School of Health and Society, and the School of Science, Engineering and Environment. And the names of those schools tell you a lot about what, what the sort of subjects that we offer. So we do offer a broad range of subjects. I've just put some details up on the screen there now about the Salford Business School. Um, you can see some of the accreditations that we have there and some of the key selling points for our programs that perhaps make us a little bit different. But I'll ask Neil to step in here as he teaches in the school and I'm sure he can tell you a bit more detail about um, what the business school offers. Yeah, thanks for that, Nick. That was really informative. Just before we start there, Nick, uh, you were breaking up a couple of times. I think it might be my end. So if anything pauses can you just let me know and i can obviously recap yeah sure you sound fine at the moment neil no problems there okay you've just you've just broken up there nick but i'll i'll just continue with the the discussion where i can um can nick i'm, I'm can you make that to powerpoint slide larger so i can just see oh. it from my end there you go mate can you see that okay 
No, it is still. It doesn't matter. I can, I can talk through it. It just seems okay. to be quiet. Well, I'll give you a couple of clues, cues there. Um, so maybe first of all, just talk about the different subject areas that the school. Sure. Offers. Yeah. Within the business school, predominantly we have a very big undergraduate community. So that means that most of the students that study with us study for a three-year undergraduate program and it can be in business management marketing it can be in law or it can be in, in accountancy related subjects most of the undergraduate programs do actually have a placement opportunity so at the end of your second year of study the students can actually do a paid 12-month placement in industry and that can either be within the UK or overseas and they're very good work experience activities they are well paid they are well resourced and so on so they're, they're very popular and irrespective of your program whether it's law accountancy or business related you can also actually do a placement so most of the students actually do a three-year full-time program alternatively if they do decide to do the 12-month paid placement it means that they do years one and two actually at the university year three would be on placement and then their final year would be year four where they come back in and as you can see at the bottom we've got accountancy and finance we have business we have a big digital element as well so it's not unusual that if for example you're doing bsc marketing with myself we do have a number of related modules that are digital based you know there is a huge growth at the moment certainly regionally and internationally where students are required to have you know a good understanding of digital digital marketing and so on we also have human resource related degrees law marketing which i teach in and also we have like the service sector tourism management related programs so that's all at undergraduate level in terms of the postgraduate level we also have related programs we have an mba um, we have a dba doctor of business administration and we also have hr related we also have management related and we also have digital related master's programs now one of the great things about the master's programs as it says there is flexible and there are a number of entry points so for example you might want to join us in September you might want to join us in November so we're already gearing up for January 21 and March 21 where students will be joining us to take modules so there is a lot of flexibility certainly on the postgraduate uh, master's program route and also there's a great opportunity for students to actually you know engage with placement opportunities also on the yeah if I, some of my connections just being lost there nick so i'll, I'll just hand back to you there okay yeah you, you that all came through fine neil don't worry about it um if i can just jump in there for a moment talk about the um work at work experience placements on the master's programs um Placements on undergraduate degrees are, are, are pretty common in the UK, but um, I think on master's programs, they're far less so. And that is something that makes Salford a bit different. And um, the opportunity to do quite extensive placements of either three or six months as part of a master's program. Um, and that's fully integrated into the program. Um, you, it's part of your visa, you're allowed to do that. You would work full time for either three or six months. And you can do that um, as an alternative to doing a traditional um, a, a kind of academic dissertation. Um, so it gives you a bit of flexibility. You know, we, we understand that some students would prefer to do something a bit more practical and vocational rather than, um, you know, writing the usual 14, 15,000 word dissertation. So it's not only an opportunity to do something a bit different that maybe, you know, if that suits your learning style better, um, but also to get some really good experience, you know, go work with a, a company, as Neil says, either in the UK or overseas um, for between three to six months. Um, so it just gives you, you know, the kind of extra options, as do the flexible intakes. Um, and that's something we found particularly um, useful over the last year. I mean, obviously, with the situation with the coronavirus, um, it's allowed students to be more flexible about when they start, you know, if they've had to change their arrangements, 
um, because of coronavirus related circumstances. Um, you know, if they want to defer to a new entry point, whether it's January, March, June, or whenever, it just get, it allows them to do that, um, you know, and perhaps come at a time that suits them better. Um, rather than being tied to just the September or January intakes, which is, you know, what most universities do. Was there anything else you wanted to add there on the business school, Neil? No, I think, as, as Nick has perfectly detailed there, you know, it's a nice environment as Salford University across the board, but certainly Salford Business School. Students often say to me, when we're out overseas recruiting, what's unique about Salford Business School? And I think for me, there is a big emphasis upon entrepreneurship. So undergraduate and postgraduate students can get help developing their own business ideas. Uh, undergraduate students can also apply for small funds to actually kickstart their business ideas. So there is a nice uh, theme of entrepreneurship that does run through Salford Business School and obviously, you know, a large proportion of UK businesses are either micro or small to medium sized enterprises. So, you know, it, it's a great environment to develop that entrepreneurship, your ideas, your business models and so on in an incubator. You know, uh, we do have an incubator facility in the business school, which will help you with your business ideas that you can develop. Yeah, it is. Uh, I think that's uh, the you know the it's something that we we do very well at Salford and and at Manchester and Salford you know as, as cities do really well you know the um, Man Greater Manchester is a thriving economic area you know the it, it's a really exciting city to live in and um, personally and professionally you know there's a lot going on here. Um, Neil mentioned a lot of startup businesses and that kind of thing. It, it's a very commercial and business orientated place to, to live and work. Um, just to move on and you know talk about some of the other schools at the university. Um, and I think what I've just said there, you know, applies equally to the other schools as well. Um, so we have, you know, I'll talk about the School of Arts, Media and Creative Technology for a moment here. This is another really strong area at Salford. Um, the school we've been doing programs in these areas uh, for many many years um, as i mentioned some of these programs are taught down at media city uh, where we have our sort of slightly smaller campus um, and that's where we do things like um, media journalism tv and radio and film um, but we also have a, a dedicated arts campus uh, arts building on the main campus the new delphi building which you can see there on the right and within there are based courses in subjects like art and design and dance, fashion and photography and performance. Um, so you, whichever campus you're, you're on, um, if you're studying with the School of Arts, Media and Creative Technology, you've got brand new facilities and you know, there's some, um, and this goes for all of our programs across the school really. Um, you have teaching and support staff. Um, and have a great deal of experience of working in industry um, as well as you know their academic background um, and th those strong industry links and partnerships are, are, are throughout the university I think we we highlighted them with the business school but they really do run a, you know across everything that we do um, and you can see there some of the rankings on uh, we're in the top 50 um, for um, several subjects there um, and there's some really interesting stuff going on in school at the moment the school of arts media and technology um, is very outward looking we have links with partners around the world um, as we do across different you know all the schools that we do um, and it's the school that I studied in as well. I, I did my master's degree in uh, the area of kind of international relations. Um, so um, it's a school that's um, it's kind of very close to me as well. Um, I found it a really good place to study. Staff were very friendly and supportive and, you know, very keen to help. Um, and I did my degree part time online. And so I actually did a lot, did a lot of writing essays while I was on planes and in hotels in places like Turkey. Um, while working um, and it was it was a really really good experience so I, I can recommend it as a student as well just to move on to um, one of the other kind of key schools for international students and um, School of Health and Society as, as the name would suggest um, covers subjects um, that you might describe as I, I guess kind of allied or related um, to medicine um, so we, we don't teach medicine in the sense of if you want to become a doctor 
um, unfortunately. However, if you want to do other subjects that are related to kind of um, health, society, social work, then we, we have a really wide range in those areas. So we do nursing in midwifery. They're very, very popular. Um, we have one of the largest nursing in midwifery schools in the whole UK. Um, we also do related subjects, things like uh, physiotherapy, sports science and rehabilitation. Um, and then we cover more social science things, um, things like sociology, social work, criminology and psychology. And psychology is one that is really popular with students from Turkey. We always have a lot of applications every year for that. Um, and this is based again on the on the main campus which is very large so it's close to manchester city center um the teaching facilities are um, industry standard you know we have things like um human performance laboratory for the the sports and physiotherapy programs um we have a lot of um technology um, there that's dedicated to the the, the health subjects um, we have a simulated hospital ward um with um, specialist facilities for both adults and children because um, we teach nursing um, for um, kind of um, adult nursing, children's nursing. Uh, we do um, specialist areas in that as well. So whichever area you find yourself in, um, you know, again, you'll be being taught by professionals with many years of experience um, in the sector um, and working in again as i say industry standard facilities um, and you can see some of the rankings we have there again in the bottom left hand corner and just to move on to cover the the kind of final school um, the school of science engineering and environment this this is one that again is really popular with international students um, we've had a lot of turkish students coming to do engineering with us in particular but we also cover um, kind of related subjects in science and um, things like physics and mathematics and um, we have a lot of specialist engineering areas you can see some of them on the right there aeronautical engineering and mechanical tend to be the most popular but we do cover civil and structural engineering and electronic engineering as well and then we have uh, computer science we have several programs in that area specializing in things like cyber security data science and uh, web development and finally we cover um, what we tend to call built environment programs so things like architecture architectural design and technology um, architectural engineering construction management and quantity surveying and you can see some of the accreditations that we have there from bodies like the Royal Institute of British Architects, the Architects Registration Board, and so on. Our engineering programs are all um, fully accredited as well as are the computing ones. So you can you know, be, be assured that you have that, that professional recognition as well as the academic side as well that, that's, that's really valuable to you in your careers. So that hopefully gives you a bit of an idea about the, the different schools um, that we offer and the, the different subjects that we do. There, there is a really broad range of, of programmes there, um, hopefully something for just about everybody. And I mentioned also, I and mean, Neil went through in some details about um, the different intake times that we have. So all of our programmes start in September, but we do also have um, programmes starting at other different times of the year. And you can see a link on the page there to the alternative intakes um, and if you click on that go straight through to it and um, you can see when the other intakes and which programs they're available for i should say and um, that this presentation is available in um, portable document format and um, so if you'd like your own copy of it and um, i'll put up my contact details at the end just send me an email and i'll send you out a copy of the pdf and then you can you know perhaps go through it with your parents or friends or school counselors um, and refer back to it if you need to so just moving on to the next uh, page, I should talk a bit about accommodation. Um, like most UK universities, um, we have our own accommodation on the campus. And we call that Peel Park Quarter because it, our campus is called Peel Park. Um, it's right next to um, a very large kind of green park area. So it's a pleasant environment to be in. Um, and the accommodation that we have on the campus is very modern. Um, it um, was built in the last five or six years. Um, anyone who was around the campus about five or six years ago would remember that it turned into a building site for a while. I'm sure you remember that, Neil. Yeah, no, it was. I'm, I'm, I'm back now, so hopefully you can hear me. Yeah, there's been a lot of uh, infrastructure, been a lot of infrastructure improvement, like Nick said, and you know it is a beautiful modern campus, and 
you'll be very impressed i'm sure when, when you visit it is re it's it's very nice accommodation um it's a great improvement over what we had when i was a student many years ago i, I did my degree nearly 30 years ago um but the accommodation now is really really nice it was voted second um of all student accommodation in the uk last year by student hut um sorry i should say should say two years ago because we're in 2021 now um student hut is a uk website where students um it's like a social media website where students can chat um and it was as i say it was voted the second best accommodation in the uk um, a couple of years ago. It is very modern. The rooms are all um, en suite now in the Peel Park quarter. Um, and they're based on kind of shared flats, which which is the, I suppose, the standard model in the UK now at most universities. So typically you'll have a, a, a flat or an apartment with between maybe four to eight students sharing. Each student would have their own private room, as I say, with en suite bathroom in most of them now. And then you have a, a shared kitchen and dining and social area. So you'd have a fully equipped kitchen. Um, you'd have sofas and um, chairs, places where you can watch TV, do gaming, all that kind of thing. Um, you can see on the left hand side of the page some of the other benefits of the, uh, the on campus accommodation. You get everything in one package, so you don't need to worry about paying separate bills. Um, in the winter, you can have the heating on as much as you like, which is always nice. Um, you get your Wi-Fi in there. You also get your insurance, and there's free on-site parking. You've got an on-site gym in the um, uh, in the accommodation, and you also get a reduced rate membership of the sports centre on the campus as well. Um, and you've got finally, you know, the kind of 24-hour security and support. So there are there are staff there all day during the day during office hours, and then in the evenings at night we've got 24-hour security staff there. So if you ever have any problems, you know, if your lights go out in your flat, if you get a leaking tap, you can get someone to come and look at it very quickly um, if you've got any concerns. But it's also a kind of very safe, secure environment as well. Um, you have to have a pass to get into the accommodation. Um, so, you know, it's, I mean, it's, you know, the, the campus is generally a very safe environment anyway, but the accommodation is even more so. Um, so it's somewhere that you can, I think, feel very, very secure. Um, just moving on to the next page, um, you've got some visual representations of the accommodation here. As you can see, it's very modern. It's quite a pleasant green environment. You've got outdoor areas where you can just go and hang out when, it, when the weather's nice. Um, you've got, this is a typical student bedroom. Um, so you've got their, um, what we call a kind of queen size, three quarter large bed. Um, just go back to that one. You can see the shelving and student work desk area. There's storage space under the bed and you can just pull out. And then behind the bed, behind the blue wall there, you've got your ensuite toilet and bathroom. So they're, they're kind of fully equipped, um, modern, really pleasant um, rooms to, uh, to live in. And then you've got on the screen there as well, one of the kind of social, and you can see the kitchen in the right hand corner there. You've got the dining kind of breakfast bar area, and then you've got the TV and um, kind of relaxing area. And also within the accommodation, um, we've got games room, so you can come down and play foosball, um, pool, snooker, things like that. You've got some video games. Um, so there are communal kind of social areas to come and hang out in with the other students as well. Um, I should mention finance, just keeping an eye on the time here. I think we're, we're doing okay here. Um, to give you an idea of the living costs, um, which is something which I think is always, you know, it's really important. Um, if you're coming to study in the UK, you need to be thinking about how you're going to finance it. So there's a breakdown there of the kind of standard expenses that students might expect to incur while they're studying in the UK. And that, I mean, you, you, you probably do need to remember that everybody funds their lifestyle differently. So some, some people might spend more money on going out or shopping or, you know, they might like to buy different sorts of food. Um, so that it will depend on what, what, what you do individually. But what we've put on there is, is probably an average, um, you know, kind of cost uh, idea of costs. So hopefully it'll just give you an idea. Um, and you can see there it comes to just over £7,000 per year. You know, although Manchester and Salford, you know, it's, it's one of the biggest cities in the UK. 
it is it does have a significant advantage over london in that it's far less expensive particularly for accommodation london is a great place but it's very expensive to live in i think one of the things i always say about manchester is you know you, you get that big city experience um but at a much lower cost and, and it's kind of smaller and friendlier as well you know it's easier to get around um you know you can walk across manchester in about half an hour 45 minutes you know in, in london it can take you two or three hours just to get across the city on public transport I mean, you um i'm not originally from um, manchester I'm, I'm from newcastle and um, but i've lived in manchester about eight years now um, and ne neil you're from this part of the world aren't you originally? Yeah, very much so and like nick said you know one of the great things about studying in salford and greater manchester is the accessibility it's not a big place you know many of the students have or they they walk around the campus but you know it's very accessible city center manchester is very close by we also have an actual train station which nick alluded to actually on the campus so you know it's very accessible public transport is also uh, very good yeah um, there's, there's an excellent metro system around manchester which is being expanded all the time so you know if, if you live in istanbul or you've been to istanbul it's very similar to the metro that you have there um i should also mention we have a free bus service between our two campuses um so if you need to travel down to media city or from media city back back to the main peel park campus um there's a free bus service which runs every 10 15 minutes um you just show your pass when you get on there and you can travel back and forth as much as you need to and there are now actually free buses around manchester city center as well um, it's something I only realised quite recently, but if you need to get from one side of the city to the other, the local authority do run um, free minibus services, so it's really easy to get around. And you know, I mean, you you know Manchester really well, Neil. It, it's a you know, it's a good city to live in. Lots lots of shops, lots of interesting stuff to do. It is, yeah. Part time jobs. Yeah, very flat as well. You know, it's <laughs> it, it's easy to you know to walk around and you know people will have their own bikes and that kind of thing and it's a very very accessible good public transport and as i say a great place to study it is yeah you know it, i think it's a very friendly part of the world um you know again it's something that i often think um is it has an advantage over london again you know london's a great place but it it can seem a bit impersonal i think manchester people are very friendly they've got a good sense of humor you know if you get lost or you're not sure what where you are people will help you um obviously we you know we get millions of visitors to the city every year with tourism and there's always um you know i, th I don't think i've ever been past uh, old trafford on the metro without seeing a bunch of chinese people uh, who are coming to visit manchester united um but obviously it's you know it's really popular with people from all over the world um I mentioned United because my mom, my wife is a big uh, United fan, so I, I have to be more loyal to them. But uh, we have got City as well. Um, I should probably talk about the entry requirements um, because obviously, if you're thinking of coming to study um, at the university, you want to know what you would need to to achieve in order to get onto the programs. Um, the entry requirements do vary a little depending on what programs you're doing but broadly speaking if you're looking for a bachelor degree you'd need to be looking at around 3.5 gpa or 70 percent on the turkish lycée diplomacy um, and if you're looking at postgraduate entry to a master's and um, we'd be looking for a gpa of about 2.5 um, on a turkish bachelor degree now we do accept qualifications from all over the world and i'm, I'm quite aware that you know, students in Turkey um, may be studying in National Baccalaureate, they might be doing A-levels, they might be doing the UK, uh, the US high, high school diploma, because there are a lot of international schools. And we do accept all of those as well. And if you want to do an undergraduate degree, but you don't quite have the results that you would need, we do have an international foundation year as well, which is a one-year programme um, that prepares you on a pathway, depending on what degree you want to do, it also includes English language and general study skills. And it's a really good way to kind of prepare yourself for degree level study. So even if you don't have what you need to come directly on the degree, you can do the IFY instead. And that's, that's you know, as I say, a really good way to get into that. We do ask for English language qualifications as well. Um, 
this is a requirement of the UK government um, as well. And you can see there on the screen that the kind of baseline requirement for a degree or a master's is an IELTS of six overall with nothing below 5.5. That does vary depending on the programs. Um, you know, some of the health programs, some of the journalism and English programs do require higher. But if you check our website, um, for um, the individual course requirements. You can see what each program asks for. Some of the other things that you might be asked for, depending on your program, if you're doing something like art and design or photography or architecture, we might ask you to show a portfolio of your work. So that, that's basically a collection of examples. Um, you know, if you're doing architecture, we'll ask you for some examples of sketching, some design work, some photography, things like that. These will depend on which program you're doing, um, but again, there's a lot of information on the website. Some programs ask for work experience, and some programs ask for interviews or auditions. So, you know, if you were doing, for example, nursing, we'd ask you to interview for that as part of the process. If you want to do music or dance, we might ask you to film or record yourself performing so that we can look at that. But the great news about these is you don't have to come to the UK for these. We can do all of these remotely. Um, so you can send a portfolio or a recording of yourself via Dropbox or WeTransfer, you know, any of these things. Um, if we need to do an interview, we can do it by Skype or Teams or the telephone. Um, so you don't need to worry about coming to the UK. However, if you do want to come to the UK to visit the campus um, before you start studying, you're really welcome to do that and um, you know, just contact me. I'll put my contact details up at the end. Um, we had a Turkish student who came from Istanbul um, last September. Um, Neil and I met him, um, I think, a year or two ago. In, it was on the Asian side in Istanbul. Um, he came with his mum. He wanted to do um, one of our engineering programmes. And he came with his parents to have a look around the campus. Um, you know, I showed him around, and um, so he got a really good idea of what he was doing, um, and he's, you know, he's really enjoying his program now. Um, just to talk quickly, again, I'm keeping an eye on the time here because I know we need to to get get done, and um, so you can ask some questions. You can just see on the screen there um, some ideas about the fees and scholarships that we offer. Um, so again, the fees vary depending on which program you do, but there is a broad guide there. Um, you can see, you know, sort of generally um, how they break down across different types of program. Broadly, there are, there are really two types of program. Um, so you can see classroom-based fees there. And classroom-based would mean, for example, perhaps a subject like business management or history um, or uh, I'm trying to think of other ones that would fit into that, um, English literature, um, you know, pre predominantly where you are, doing academic learning with written resources and you know there's not much of a practical element lab based would refer to anything where we we're using equipment or facilities so perhaps things like um computing subjects or computer gaming or some of the medical subjects um things like engineering where you're using more expensive pieces of kit and the, the slightly higher fee reflects that um, because obviously you know we need to to be able to buy this equipment for the students um, and in most cases most you know almost all the equipment that you need is provided and um, you know if you're doing photography or film something like that we have a, a really good store of film cameras um, digital cameras dslr stuff um, and again, that goes for most of our programs. You know, you, normally students will bring their own laptop, but beyond that, they do need to really lay out a lot of money on equipment. There. Um, and we do have um, facilities on the campus um, in the um, library where you can actually not only use PCs on, on site, but you can borrow laptops as well and use them all around the campus on Wi Fi. Um, so if your laptop ever malfunctions, um, you can borrow one in the meantime, and we do have a really good free IT department who can hopefully get that fixed for you as well. Um, just quickly to mention about um, uh, course deposits. Um, once you accept your offer, we ask you to pay a deposit of £4,400 in order to secure your visa. If your visa is refused for any reason or you're not able to come for reasons related to the coronavirus, then we do refund that in full. Um, so you've got that kind of guarantee there. And obviously that's knocked off your fee when you, when you come to pay it on registration. And you've also got some details there about scholarships. Um, so, um, 
I'll talk about those in a little bit more detail now. Um, we do um, scholarships for students depending on where they're from. So we have a regional scholarship which includes Turkish students. Um, we also have our General International Excellence Award and we have subject scholarships as well. And I'll show you a link on the website for the scholarships in a moment that you can go to and have a look at the full range there. The highest one that we have available is the Salford International Excellence Scholarship, um, which gives you a £5,000 fee reduction. This is the only one that you need to apply for separately. With all the other scholarships, we, um, we assess all students automatically for them, so you don't need to make a separate application. The only one you do need to separately apply for is this one. Um, and it's a two-part essay, and there's some guidance on the screen there that explains what we'd be looking for in that essay. And again, if you want to kind of refer back to this, you can just take a look on the website, um, and um, all the information is on there. We have a really good page um, for international students, and there's a link there to, to detail, not just information about scholarships, but kind of everything to do with, with international students. Um, for applications, um, we do ap direct applications for almost all of our programs, and you can see them on the left of the screen there. The only ones that we don't do direct applications for are undergraduate, so bachelor degree ones. And for those, we go through the UCAS system. UCAS is the Universities and Colleges uh, Admissions Service, and it's a, it covers pretty much all universities in the UK, and it allows you to apply um, make one application to up to five different universities. So you fill out one application, that gets sent to the five universities that you choose, um, and then hopefully you get your offers through there. It's really easy to do. It it's, perhaps sounds a bit complicated, but it's not. Um, it's really easy to navigate. Um, just go to ucas.com, um, and that will explain how to make the application. And you can see on, on there the codes for the University of Salford where S03 and SALF. Um, so it's easy to find us on there as well. But as I say, for all the other programmes, you can apply directly to us online through our website. And on each programme page, there's a button on the top right hand corner which says apply now. Just click on there and it'll take you straight, straight through the application system. And CASAs and visas, I won't, I won't go into this in too much detail um, because it's, it can be a little bit complex and you don't really need to worry about it at the moment. Um, but once you've secured your offer, you, you get your CAS. Now, CAS stands for Certificate of Acceptance for Study. And that means it's an electronic number and it means that you can then apply for your visa. So we'll take you through this process. Um, once you've secured your offer, you get your CAS. You make your application for your visa. Hopefully, you get your visa, and then you can start uh, studying with us. And uh, as I say, you know, we we we've got a lot of experience of getting students through this process, and we will take you through um, every step of the way, kind of making sure um, that everything works out for you. I should mention um, COVID nineteen because obviously it's something that a lot of students are asking about at the moment. We have a obviously it, it has. Um, resulted in some disruption to the university over the past year. Um, as you can see, I'm working um, from home at the moment. Neil is as well. Um, you know, normally we'd have the our offices in the university behind us, um, but we have kept the university running pretty much as close to normal as possible. And um, throughout COVID, um, a lot of our teaching is online at the moment. Um, and because the UK is now into a, a kind of full lockdown for a few weeks. Um, we will be teaching fully online for the next kind of six or seven weeks. Um, but a lot of our teaching has been delivered on campus as well over the past semester. And we are hoping to get back to that as soon as possible. Um, you've got a link on the screen there for information for students um, about the coronavirus um, and how it's affecting us. And you can go to that and that will hopefully give you all the information that you might need about that. Um, but you are welcome to ask me any questions as well about that. Um, there's my contact details. Um, you've got my WhatsApp, mobile, and email address in the right-hand corner there. I'll put those into the chat as well so that you can see them. You've also got um, on the top there our general kind of international office query email, our website, and some of our social media links there. Um, and that looks like I've finished bang on time, um, it's about 45 minutes. Um, so I'm going to have a look at some questions now. 
Um, so I'll leave that on the screen in case you want to make a note there. And I will put my uh, my email into the chat box here. And then I'll just have a look at some questions and we can see about answering those. Um, and if you, um, if anybody wants to contact Neil directly to ask about the business school, you're welcome to do that via me. I'm quite happy to, to pass questions on to him. Um, so looking at some of the questions here, um, Julio was just asking about the IFY, um, about the difference between um, computer science IFY and the nursing IFY and the lectures. Um, so this is about our information year, which is what we mean when we say IFY. Yeah, the the IFY will differ depending on which program you're going on to at the end. So you'd follow a pathway um, according to um, whichever subject you wanted to do. Now, the IFY does have some things that are the same for all students. So every student will do some English language and every student will do some general study skills. So things like essay writing, note taking, and all that kind of thing. But, um, Depending on which program you do, your your the content of the IFY will vary. Um, so students, for example, doing the health um, IFY will spend more time um, looking at biological sciences. Um, you know, they really will be um, perhaps doing some practical work in some of the facilities um, in that department. Um, students who want to do engineering or science will have a, a curriculum that's much heavier on things like perhaps maths um, and physics or chemistry or biology. Students doing the business um, finance and law foundation would be, you know, concentrating on that. So it, it will depend um, on, on what you're going on to, but, um, you know, the, the details are all on the program information pages on our website. Um, and if you have a bit of an explore on the website, then you can see there, um, the a kind of breakdown for each program of exactly what you'd study on it and that includes the ifys as well do you do any teaching on the ifys neil oh i think we've lost neil. sorry nick oh sorry neil. No, still here. Do, you, do, you, do you do any teaching on the ify for the business school no no we we don't it tends to be run centrally where like you say they do a uh, you know, report writing, they do something in the context of business and then upon successful completion of that, they would join us on, for example, first year business or first year marketing degree. But the students that take it, are, it's very useful for them. And it's if you don't have sufficient grades to get on the degree of your own choice initially, the IFY is a, is a very good route. It is, yeah. And I should also say, um, we, we had a question there from Corey. Um, about IFY for masters. Um, if you've got a degree, then you wouldn't normally need to do um, an IFY to go on the masters. It is just for undergraduate study. But we do have a, a graduate certificate um, that students can do um, if their degree is not quite up to the right level for a master's degree. So if you're a little bit below the normal requirements for a master, you can do our graduate certificate, which is a four month program um, before you do the masters. Um, and that that's something I think, which is a really good option for students in the business school, isn't it, Neil? Yeah, I would, I would encourage anybody to consider that as a, as a route, like Nick said, now, those students that engage with us, you know, speak very positive about the support systems that are in place. and. If you can't get on your degree of choice initially, you know, don't be put off. There are additional uh, processes that you can go through, including the IFY and, and related that Nick's uh, alluded to. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's, a, it's a really good one. It's somewhat, I think some universities would call it a pre-masters. Um, it's, a, it's a similar sort of thing, really. I was just putting in a, putting in a couple of answers there. Um, there was um, Zero was asking about um, the age of students. Um, you saying, is there any age limit? There's no age limit at all. Um, you know, we, we have students of all ages, um, upwards of 18. And I mentioned earlier that I did my master's. Um, I finished it two years ago. Um, but I had about a 25-year gap between finishing you between starting and doing my degree at university and going on at my master's I was out of education for over 20 years and um, so no there's no limits at all and we, we have students who are 
you know, aged up to kind of 80, 85, 90. Um, so um, we, we welcome everybody. As long as you're 18 or over, there's no problem. Um, so if, there are, if you're looking at, a, um, you know, a PhD, um, even if you've got a gap for a few years, that's not a problem at all. Um, and yeah, obviously, Neil, you did your PhD a bit later on, didn't you? I oh, think I lost Neil, not to worry. Um, I'll go on to Mikhail's question. Um, Mikhail was just asking about working during education. Um, yeah, you can. Um, a lot of our students take part-time jobs while they're studying. Um, and at the moment, students are allowed to study 20, sorry, are allowed to work 20 hours a week while they're studying. And um, that's, that's allowed on your UK student visa. And we have an employment agency on the campus who can help you find part-time jobs. Um, so um you know you, you can perhaps go and work in an office or a call center or a restaurant we actually employ students on the campus as well um, and a lot of students do have part-time jobs it, it gives them obviously some extra money um, it's a really nice way to make new friends and it looks good on your cv you know it's a it's a good opportunity to get some experience um, and at the moment as well um, the uk government allows students who finish a degree or a master's um, to stay in the uk and work for two years after they've finished um, it's um, like a post-study work visa um, so when you finish your studying you will have the opportunity to stay in the uk and, and, and get a job and live and work here um, so yeah there's some really good opportunities there and that's in addition to the normal placements that we do as part of the uh, the pro uh, the the programs. Um, we had a question there from Yaren about the scholarships. So I, mean, uh, I mentioned there about I think a bit earlier about the scholarships. So hopefully that's answered your question. But if you do have any more questions, just have a look on the website and there's loads of information on there. Um, Mikhail was asking about PhDs. Um, yeah, I mean we we we have. Um, uh, postgraduate research in pretty much all of our departments so whether you want to do a PhD in business or literature or history computing engineering health sciences you know whatever it is we have very active research departments and again I would say just have a look around the website because there's a lot of really useful information on there um, details about our staff what their research backgrounds and specialisms are what they've published and you know what they're doing at the moment so you, you can probably get a lot of information from there and we do have language preparation as well for all programs so if your English isn't quite at the right level already um, you can do a short pre-sessional English course and that will allow you to hopefully get onto the right level to go onto the program Faisal was just asking there about qualifications for civil engineering. Um, if you look at the particular page um, on the website for the civil engineering programs, you can see the exact qualifications. Um, but generally, you'll need a background in kind of science and mathematics um, in order to qualify for a program in, the, in those areas. Um, you, you do need some prior experience, particularly in mathematics. So you'll need good grades in those ones. Um, but you are welcome if you if there's anything that you've studied if you want to send me copies of your qualifications or just tell me about what you're studying at the moment if you have any questions just email them directly to me i'll be really happy to take a look at them and guide you according to which program you want to go on to Corey was just asking there about um engineering masters programs in the uk they're one year programs um, so they're normally 12 months so if you start in september you'd study your full 12 months up to the following September. But master's degrees in the UK usually are just one year, which gives you an advantage that obviously, you know, you can move on to your career uh, more quickly. Um, Corey was also asking about whether you can get admission to a master's um, from a, a different department. The answer to that is yes, you can sometimes. Um, it depends. Um, you know, sometimes we might have a student who's done a degree maybe in uh, English literature and then they do a master's in um, business. Now, that, that's possible. If it, it, where you might hit a problem would be with perhaps things like engineering and science, you would normally need to have studied the same subject at undergraduate level. Um, but it varies, and I, I, again, I would say contact us directly um, for more information about that. If you if you tell me what you know, email me directly. Tell me what what you've been studying, and if you want to change, then I should be able to give you an indication of whether that would be possible to do. Um, 
just trying to get through all the questions here quickly. Um, Zainep was asking about, do we have a counselling psychology master's programme? Yes, we do. Um, we, we do a, um, a master's um, psychology, one for addiction and one for therapies. Um, again, have a look on the website. There's loads of information on there. Julia was just asking which programmes Turkish students are quite keen to do. Um, Turkish students do a wide range of subjects with us. Business is really popular. Um, social sciences like psychology and criminology tend to be popular and engineering is really popular as well but we do have students you know right across the university from turkey um, and staff as well actually we have a very international staff at salford and um, you know there's teachers and academics from around the world it's one of the things that makes it a really interesting place um, to to kind of to work and study at there was quite a few there are people asking about scholarships. Hopefully I've covered that. Um, unfortunately, we don't do anything in gastronomy and culinary arts. Um, I guess the nearest to that would be something like events or tourism management. Um, Zainet was just asking if people have already done a PhD, can they apply to another PhD? Yes, you can. Um, you may have problems getting your visa for that. There are some government restrictions on studying again at the same level, um, but that's something we could look at with you. So I would say contact us directly, um, <coughs> excuse me, and we'll take a look at that for you. Um, there was a couple of questions there about working part-time while studying. Um, yeah, I've already mentioned that and we've got details about scholarships as well. I've run through that as well. Um, I think I'm just about to lose my connection. So I'm going to um, wind up the presentation. I'm quite conscious that I don't want to run over time. Um, you've got my contact details there on the screen. Um, please do contact me directly um, if you have any further questions and I'll be really happy to chat with you. You can do that via email or WhatsApp. Um, or you can contact our general um, email address on there and um, we'll be really happy to have a chat with you to help you um, answer any questions that you have and hopefully make your application to Salford. Um, and I'd just like to say thank you very much for taking the time um, to tune in. It's been really, really good to speak to you um, and uh, we we'll hope to welcome you to Salford um, in the future. So thank you very much and I wish you all the best. Thank you, Nick. Uh, you answered a lot of questions and uh, it was a very really comprehensive webinar for the participants as well. Uh, also, I would like to thank the participants in Turkish as well. Uh, katıldığınız için teşekkür ederiz. Umarım sizin için de faydalı bir webinar olmuştur. Ayrıca Beşteki webinarımıza da davet etmek isteriz. Thank you again, Nick. Uh, it was a pleasure to have you in IFT Talks. Thank you Do very you much. Have anything? Thank you. It's been a real pleasure. I always enjoy these. Unfortunately, I think Neil's connection wasn't so good, so we lost him. But yeah. um, he got to go through his bit, and um, yeah, it was great.